I'm so happy to have Sarah Jane Ho on the show today. I've been talking to you probably almost two years ago, so I'm so happy I finally like have you here. Um, you, it's like almost two years ago. That's right after you got married, or right before I don't even remember. And you were introduced by one of my close friends, who also a close friend of yours, Peter, who went to Harvard Graduate School with you. And during that time, the reason why Peter brought your name up because we would shoot. He was saying, "Hey, you have to meet this really awesome cool girlfriend of mine. Went to Harvard Business School with me, and she's coming a show with Netflix." And then I was like, "Wow! First of all, it's not that many Asian women to be on Netflix show that I know of." And then what I thought was even more interesting, it was that he was saying the show that's going to be on Netflix is about. Teaching people about etiquette, and I was like, "Okay, why are you trying to bring her name up? Do I need that? I mean, what are you trying to say?" So, yeah. So, Sarah J is here to talk about the show. I wanted to know more about how you got into etiquette and how you got into the show and on Netflix. That's what everybody wanted to be on. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny when you said like sort of Asian woman on with her own show on Netflix. It's so funny. Like to me, I just never thought of myself. I mean, I'm very obviously a Chinese woman, but I just never really thought of myself as that. I don't think of myself as that first. That's not my first identifier.、Mm-hmm. And so, with me and my show on Netflix, I just think of it as like, okay, I'm、I、have a show. I'm a person. I have a show on Netflix. And it wasn't until later when he, actually somebody at Netflix told me they're like, you know, one of my producers said.、Uh, We're so proud that we can have an Asian woman a lead, who who a lead in unscripted, right? He he said that in because you have scripted, which is like movies and you know yeah, like and unscripted, right? Mine's unscripted, which is reality and documentaries,、um, and to have an Asian woman lead her own show in that is just so meaningful. And I, that was the first time I was like, oh, like I guess like you know, it's just it's a very interesting perspective of looking at things. And I think it's more so in America because I'm I live in I grew up in Hong Kong,、yeah. and I live in Shanghai. Everybody looks the same, right? You know, so so to me, it's like, yeah, everybody's Chinese. So so that's not the first identifier we go with, but so it's, it's very interesting, and it adds like a whole new layer of perspective to me when I'm in the states, and that's sort of like you know one of the lenses or or, or identifiers that I'm, I'm seen as. But wait, but you also went other country for、yeah. school because I see you also speak German, you also speak French, and obviously English, and you know. Mandarin and I am assuming a different dialogue, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. By the time I was fourteen years old, I had lived in Papua New Guinea. Not a lot of people even know where that is. I I, I know it's a small little country, but you're right. I don't even know exactly where it. And how you even got there in the first place? Well, it, it's between Indonesia and Australia. Okay. And my dad was doing oil exploration. Ah.、Oh. So that's why we were there. And and so I was in Papua New Guinea, the UK, Hong Kong. And Exeter, New Hampshire. By the time I was fourteen years old, because I went to Phillips Exeter Academy, which is a boarding school, I was one year behind Mark Zuckerberg, who founded Facebook. Oh my God! And, and he went to boarding school. He, he went to that boarding school. He went to that boarding school, and the, the, I didn't know that the name Facebook comes from what we used to call our our directory. We had a it was、uh, you know it was before the time of like s- smartphones. Everybody just had we didn't even have mobile phones back then. This is like the year two thousand. We all had extensions, so our rooms had extensions, right? The dial, like the proper old ty- old type of phones, and there was this book that had every student's photo, home address, and extension and email address, and you would just say, "Oh, like look her up in the Facebook, look him up in the Facebook," and and that was like what we called it, and he took that name and made it Facebook.、Oh, wow. Okay,、yeah. so you went to the, see this is a little interesting fact I would never know that、yeah. you actually went to the same boarding school as the founder of Facebook. But、yeah, I was a year behind him,、wow. uh, and but you know, I mean,、yeah, from what I've heard from friends who had classes with him, he was brilliant even back then. And then I went to Georgetown. I worked for I three years of work experience, and then I went to Harvard Business School. Yeah. And after Harvard Business School, I moved to Beijing and I opened up my etiquette school. Wait, but how? What made you to decide that's what you wanted to do from business school? And decide to go back to Beijing because that's not what you origin your family originally lived in Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, and in Hong Kong, you know, I mean, I obviously I went to international school. I went to German school. I grew up speaking Cantonese, okay,、right? which is a totally different dialect、yeah. than Mandarin, which is the official language official. of China. Yes. So I had to, you know, and I my mom had 
Actually, when, when I was a little girl, my mom had always arranged a tutor for me in Mandarin. Although, you know, when you have a tutor, like how good is your Mandarin really, right? And but but True. and I used to really not like. I, I used to fall asleep. I mean, Mandarin is like one of the most difficult languages in the world. And my mother would say, "未来的中国会很伟大." Uh, so China. She gonna always be, has this high side. Yeah, and, and and my mom was like Canto, full on. She was born in Hong Kong, like raised in Hong Kong, and she said. China is going to be a very great country, and you, as a Chinese person, if you do not speak your own language, that is that will be a great shame. Thus, you will continue your Mandarin tuition. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> and and actually, that's the thing I'm most grateful for because at least, even though my vocab wasn't great, but at least that made my pronunciation very biaojun. Yeah, you very just speak precise. Mandarin, and that sounds very special yeah. to me. Yeah, like the so for people who doesn't understand Mandarin.、Um, Is that when you you can tell like how official and how proper your Mandarin is by the accent? And then Beijing, it was like the most proper way I think t- the way to speak Mandarin. So yeah, and yeah. you just sound like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. So、um, so yeah, and then and then as as when I was at Harvard Business School, I was trying to think about what I wanted to do next,、mm-hmm. and I knew a couple things. I mean, ge- geographically speaking, I wanted to be in China. Uh, before, you always knew you want to go back to I China. To, I wanted to go to mainland China. I wanted to go to Beijing because, to me, you know, in 2012, it was a very exciting time in China. It was right after the Olympics. Okay. Right. So China was very open, very tolerant. A lot of overseas Chinese young people coming back, starting businesses. All eyes were on China. A lot of expats in China. It was very lively and bustling.、Mm-hmm. And I wanted to go and be part of that.、Uh, and. So pretty different from Hong Kong because most Hong Kong kids they study in America and they just go back to Hong Kong and spend their whole life in Hong Kong, right? But for me, I want I'm a Sagittarius. I wanted to see the world, and, wow. And then I also so I was thinking, okay, if I want to be in China and I want to think of a business idea,、uh, what is something that I'm passionate about that I think can also, you know, maybe there's a market need for and that I can sustain myself on financially. And you know, one thing is that I grew up with my mother being an incredible role model and in my mind an amazing hostess. She was always hosting in the home, always like dinner parties. Christmas would be, you know, dozens of friends at our house, and I saw her create these really magical moments from bringing people together in our home. And when I was twenty-one, I lost her to cancer.、Mm-hmm. And I'm an only child. My dad didn't entertain in the same way on his own, and my my life really changed. You know, my I became it, my life in Hong Kong was it was very lonely. My home life, you know, our our house that used to be very bustling and busy. Was very empty. Especially, she loved host people, and I'm sure she's a a wonderful host. And so Christmas would just be very empty, and I, you know, I'd spend it with my cousins or my grandma, who's my mother's mother. But you know, every time, every time I would, day that I was home in Hong Kong in our house would be a reminder of how lonely I was. And but since I'm a Sagittarius and I'm really social, I'm always you know, I, I, to me, my friends are my family.、Mm-hmm. I realized that actually, I could continue her legacy by. Doing this by starting an etiquette school in China, and you know China, China opened up to economic reform in 1978, right? And I often say no other country has been through so much change in such a short amount of time like China. When you think about the Industrial Revolution in Europe, that took 150 years or 200 years to play out, right? And then you had Services Revolution and then Technological Revolution. In China, like all that happened in 30 years.、Yeah. So you have all these people with their newfound way of So, you know, riches and way of living, but they're not quite sure how to navigate the world with confidence.、Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, maybe this is an opportunity to 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 do this and combine a market need with my mother's legacy and something that I actually really love doing. Did you have any friends or family living in Beijing at that time? No family. I mean, no. I have no family in mainland China. My parents were both born in Hong Kong. Yeah. But I did have some friends because before HBS, I spent a year doing nonprofit. In Beijing, I was a full-time volunteer. Oh, so basically, my work experience. I because remember, I did three years of work experience between college and business school. Yeah, I did two years as an M and A analyst at Perella Weinberg in New York City, and then I did my you know year three was nonprofit doing microfinance in China,、yeah. where I was based in Beijing, but I would also go out into the field、uh, in you know really rural parts of China to visit the people who were we were making loans to, so that they could raise their pigs and raise their chickens and. You know, grow their crops. Yeah. So, and that that was an incredible experience well, that's too. Well, like, when I was reading your bio, I feel like most of your background are like finance. So it's always like intrigued to me, and it was definitely not entertainment. Right? I didn't see the entertainment.、Part. No. Yeah. So, 
like I was wondering, do so many people want to get a show on Netflix and who are in the entertainment business forever? And there you are, like representing Asian women, actually women to have a show, right? And as an Asian woman to be on the show for something that is so unique. Because if you look at Netflix, a lot of documentary shows like talk show or um, flipping the houses or something like that. And your show is the only one that is actually stand out like the it's most. It's the only etiquette show. <laughs> and by yourself without like, without. True. Yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. yeah. I mean, Queer Eye is like five gay guys exactly. doing makeovers, right? Me, I'm like one Asian. Yeah. Woman. So. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, I, I think, I think it's a mixture of two things. Uh. Firstly, manifestation, and secondly, I was very lucky. Before the Netflix show, which you know came out in 2022, and um, we started conversations in 2018. Before that, in China, I was already doing a little bit of media, so oh, you know I, okay. I had I my edit show, but I was also doing a lot of little videos on social media, just oh, little wow. clips. People who would come come into Beijing that I would meet, for example, Stella McCartney, like she came, I was invited to a dinner with her for her brand. And I said, Stella, I just turned on my camera and said, let's do a little like video for, you know, for my Chinese followers. And we just had like a 30 second, you know, back and oh, forth. Oh, wow. okay. And, and just, just a lot of really interesting and diverse people that came through. Mm -hmm. And I had an uncle who was watching these and he said, oh, you know, um, Beijing television, so BTV, uh, is looking to create more content that's more international and more for young people, maybe I can hook you up and you two can do something. And then so in 2019, I actually had a, a weekly show on Beijing television that I hosted. It oh, was wow. in studio and a mix of out of studio. And for out of studio, it was really more of like a a lifestyle show okay. where I introduced like international and Chinese lifestyle and concepts, whether it was cooking or dressing or you know etiquette, like all this and that. And I would okay. also fly over here and I would interview people like Anastasia Beverly Hills, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I interviewed her. I interviewed, she's amazing. She's women. amazing, yeah. amazing. Jean-Georges, uh, yeah. Jessica, a bunch of different people. And then I'd also be shooting, you know, in my studio in Beijing in BTV. And that was incredible. And to me, like it was it, like, I, I was just learning so much about the industry and about like even myself just from doing these shows. And, but I, you know, it never crossed my mind like Netflix, but you know, I, like I was trying to find a direction and I really enjoyed media. So whatever I was doing, like I kind of, kind of kept staying in that. Mm -hmm. And then in 2018, I got a cold email from a, from Beach House Productions based in Singapore. And they said, you know, we, they, they literally, they sent an email to my info email and said, oh, you know, we think what you're doing is very interesting. And we had a call and they said, do you mind if we like pitch you as an idea to some, to some networks that we're trying to do business with? Mm -hmm. I was like, sure. And then they pitched me to Netflix and Netflix greenlit it very quickly. Wow. Uh, and so I think, it, you know, I was just very, very lucky. But I think also the thing with Netflix is that they're very good at finding new ways of telling stories. Mm. That, and that's what makes Netflix so unique. And any other person, you said, do an etiquette show. They'd be like, are you kidding me? That's so out of date. It's so traditional, it's so rigid. But Netflix, no. They saw that it's a way to promote genuine and healthy individual growth. And that's why my show is such a feel good show. It came right, right out of COVID. You know, it's a very happy show. People always say they have fun watching it and they learn so much. Yeah, yeah. And then, but how you, so you wanted to pick a niche and then how that could lead to etiquette. Like, is it like the stylist, because you're a great stylist too. I mean, based on your show in Beijing, it was like a lifestyle, right? So among all this, why particularly like etiquette? Well, um, well, with etiquette, you know, so for, for, for China, I, I, I wanted to bring that concept of the Swiss finishing school to China. Okay. So I actually personally went to a Swiss finishing school before going to China. Oh, wow. Um, okay. And I had an amazing experience, learned a lot, and then I completely customized, I tweaked the whole curriculum because you can't, you know, it, you can't just take something from the West and put it in the East, right? I completely like overhauled it for my target customer in China. Mm -hmm. And I and the course is called a hostess course. So it's how to entertain in the home, how to dress, how to greetings and introductions, table conversation, you know, all these things. And because that's what I thought there was a market need for. And it's something that I've also I grew up very sensitive to because my mother's from Hong Kong. She's a tiger mom, <laughs> you know, and she was always like she'd kick me on the table if if somebody's teacup was empty saying, oh, you have to refill, you know, uncle so and so's teacup. 
Oh, wow. Oh, every Hong Kong mother is like this. That's why, every, like... No, I feel I'm such a bad mother. I'm like, shit. I'm like, oh. Okay. No, and, okay. And very, very demanding, very sensitive to social things. And so I grew up with that. I, you know, and, and then my, my mother was also in the entertainment industry. Oh, she she so was, uh, okay. there, there was a company called BMG, Bottlesman Music Group, before uh-huh. merged with Sony and, and then became okay. Sony BMG. They were two separate companies. But BMG had Andy Lau, uh-huh. right? Deng Oh, those are all the all, famous classic. Yeah, all the classic Hong Kong okay. guys. Yeah. They also had Air Supply, Tony Braxton, yeah. like Kenny G. And she was CFO of Asia Pacific by the time she was 37. So oh. she would take me, and the great thing I think that mothers do, like fathers don't do this as much, or at least my dad didn't do this as much, was when my mom went on business trip, she would take me. Hmm. I was like seven or eight or nine years old. And I'd fly with her on her business trips to watch like, you know, concerts. And then we'd go backstage, hang out with Kenny G. We'd be having dinner with Andy Lau every month. What? Yeah. Do you know how many women would be like, wow, did you, did you understand how famous he was? And he was like, oh, yeah, that the, was, he was, that was, he was the king of yeah, like, back then. All the women would, and he would yeah. be like, okay, for people who doesn't know who he is, he's almost like Elvis Presley for, for Chinese, for, for oh, yeah, but, but, like, but no drugs, no drugs, no sex, yeah. right? Clean, like, like reputation Super is clean. clean as a whistle. Yes. And I mean, and, and he's a complete gentleman and he's very hardworking, very hardworking and very polite. I mean, he's just always punctual, never late. Wow. Very Good soft-spoken. Like, I mean, he's just an incredible, really incredible. So you're learning all of this by going on a business trip with your mom. That's such a great learning. And you know what? My mom it. was on, when she was on conference calls, if I just happened to be like hanging out with her or doing my homework at her table, mm-hmm. she would mute in between and she would say you know why i said that because i anticipate that he's going to say this and i want to counter and blah 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 i was like 11. <laughs> so i was like getting like she's a remarkable i mini, wish i could to meet her i mean i like yeah so i i oftentimes i when you know my i lost my mother 21 but i my mindset is always thinking i'm just so glad that i had her for the first 21 years because i learned so much from her yeah because i always think how brave you are but I just decided to go, go go to Beijing and start something that is really different from what you study from, right? Because in the finance background, I'm seeing to pick that and decide to go Beijing when you don't really have any family yeah, member yeah, there. Yeah, no support system over there. I went on my own. And, you know, back then, we didn't have, like, Uber and DD, right? You had to, like, <laughs> hail. Living in Beijing, it was hard, like, 10 years ago. Yeah, you had I to, did. like, stand in the street and hail a cab in, like, insane extreme temperatures. Yeah, and then I was thinking, wait, but you also, like, as a little girl, you pretty much live in so many different countries. I lived in Papua New Guinea. Like, that's tribal. Yeah. <laughs> like, how you even survive from that to German. I mean, for Germany, I learned German, and then, like, London, right? You also you, live so in you, London. One, one word you just said, survive, it became my survival tactic. Like, integrating and going native into any culture became my survival tactic. And... Mm-hmm. And so even now, and actually in my book, Mind Your Manners, that's coming out April 9th. Yeah. I, oh, by I, the way, I, I love this clothes on you. You look so pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Mind Your Manner. It's coming out, right? It's coming out on April 9th uh, of this people, year. People, people. Pre-order on Amazon. Um, but in, in the intro, I talk about how I see myself as a microcultural anthropologist. Mm. At one of my favorite classes at Georgetown, I was an English major, but I also took an anthropology class which is the study of human cultures, yeah. and I love it. And I see myself, I, like- How you even thought about that major? I was like, I-, I Oh, I didn't major, I th- majored in English literature, okay, but, I took but- it, I took an anthropology class because, you know, it's, it's liberal arts and humanities, and, mm. and I wanted to explore. So with, so in everybody's life, like throughout our day, we move across different microcultures. Even let's say in one office, different departments can be different microcultures, right? Different sets of friends or different microcultures. And every time I go in, I meet somebody new or I'm in a new area with a new group of people, I'm thinking, what are the codes of conduct here? Mm. How are people dressed? How are they speaking? What is their slang, mm-hmm. right? What, what, like just all these things. And then I almost subconsciously adjust myself because I, I believe etiquette is contextual. There is mm. no right or wrong. It, it really depends on who you're with, what country you're in, what culture you're, you're with. Because for like, I think for Japan is 
you supposed to drink the super loud noise. Right, you supposed to slurp, and and, and even China. That's like you really to, to show oh, China that also? China as well, and to show that it tastes good. But in the West, or I mean, yeah. that in France, that'd be really really rude. Yeah. So it's like right. you get yelled at. I remember. It's like, yes. can you eat more quiet? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, shh. Yeah, and and that's why I feel that you know in, in anthropology they talk about you go into the field, going into the field, and it's about observation, and and the ultimate is to go native. And and I feel that like it my actually my biggest personal achievement is that I feel like I've gone native in a country that was originally very foreign to me, uh, and uh, you know I mean I'm, I'm Chinese but Hong Kong is very different from mainland China. Yeah, yes. And now when I speak Mandarin, people actually don't believe I'm not from China. They say, wait, 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 you you say you you grew up in Hong Kong. Yeah. Oh no, you must have just gotten the Hong Kong citizenship. They're like your Mandarin is too good for you to yeah, not be local. Yeah, no, that's what I was trying to tell the audience. <laughs> I know, like you can't tell, but I my Mandarin sound like a Taiwanese Mandarin itself because I'm from Taiwan. But then sometimes I get embarrassed because I was like, do I sound like a Taiwanese Mandarin here? You probably do, but it's okay. Yeah, but then I was like, but I came here when I was twelve. So, but your Mandarin is like official, official, like very、um, belted, like the official, like. How are you supposed to speak it? I think you know. So yeah. So, but that was and then, okay. So Netflix. So you went on there. And- yeah, and you know the show was、uh, it was delayed by two years because of COVID because、wow. we couldn't find a safe place to shoot. China obviously closed borders and didn't let anybody、yeah. in. Yeah. And then the states was a mess, and the only place that was safe to shoot was Australia because they were so strict. Australia was the only country that did not even let its own citizens in or out of the country. So how you get filmed? The- But they let in all of Hollywood, and that's why Australians were upset. I mean, so a lot of Hollywood shows were were, were、oh. filmed there. You know, studios were like building studio sets in Sydney. Got it. Celebrities were buying property in in in, in wow, Sydney in Australia.、That. Yeah, and and then like because you know it's investment in the country, right? Every time you shoot something there, so they would be like, okay, for investment, we will、yeah. allow it. And and so I went so. They parachuted me, and I got a visa. But everybody else was a local hire, so we, you know, supporting the local economy. And I'm so glad it was shot in Sydney because I hadn't spent meaningful time in Australia since I was a little girl with my parents. And it is a beautiful country. It's so the food is so fresh, the people are so friendly, the coffee is so good. I know. It's and 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 professional. Like the, I mean, the crew was so professional. Everybody was top of their game. I couldn't have shot a better show. You know, with, with, you know, with a better team. The、amazing. show was really, I that was really entertaining. Even though you, when you, my own matter, like the show, like when you, just first when you hear the concepts about etiquette, you're like, yeah, you think, oh, this is gonna be really stuffy. Yeah. And,、uh, But it wasn't. It was actually、yeah. really fun. You got invited, really fun to guess,、uh, and then it's a really great dynamic. So and then I learn a lot. So I, I mean, people can see the banana. I like. I never know you have to cut the banana. <laughs> no, I mean, listen. That's just a fun party trick. And it's, it's.、Uh, what I like to say is, you know, cutlery, because it cut cutting the banana is like not that difficult, but cutting the orange is actually very difficult. And it's just a real test of your cutlery skills. Like, how steady is your hand? Are you holding、mm. them correctly? Are you making sure you're not making loud noises like cling, cling, cling? Yeah. You know, when you're cutting stuff. So, but it, it's really just fun and enjoyable. And I always believe that people learn more when they're having fun. Yes. Yes. And it was really entertaining for the audience to watch because, like I said, when I first hear the concept, it's like I don't know. I don't want to. It remind me how like. Because、yeah. I went to Catholic girl school, oh, so and I was thinking it's gonna feel like a nun. It was like your skirt's too short, you know. <laughs> but, but it wasn't like that at all. Yeah. So I'm excited about your book. So like it was carry over to books. So if you didn't see the show, this is a good way you can learn any more depth of how to my own manner, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know,、okay. this is. I mean, the subtitle is called "How to Be Your Best Self in Any Situation." Yeah. And we're across five chapters. So there's work,、uh, social life. Family,、um, love, and relationships, and then food and travel. I saw a little piece of it. I don't know if it's on your YouTube or video. It's about dating. You also tell like help people how to go on date or something like that with the etiquette, right? Yeah, that's under that the love and relationships、read? chapter. Ah, so I do have to read that. <laughs> I was like, I'm sure you have, yeah, I'm, I'm, relationship I'm sure you have many men after you, Evie. <laughs>、no, like, but okay, I definitely had to read that part. What it's, about it's the, great fun? What about the family? Why is it? Oh well, fa- listen, like I had get so many questions about family、huh. from my followers, and you know, family they really know how to push our buttons. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Probably because they installed them. Yeah. Right. <gasps> and nothing cuts you to the core like when there's discord in the family. Okay, so when you say the how to be your best self in any situation, so the family is like when we go to family dinner, like how we eat, you know what Thanksgiving dinner is is one yes. of the things people always are in fear of. It's not something people are looking forward to, honestly. I because that's one of the topic how you avoid being triggered or how you're going to act in this Thanksgiving dinner because someone's still going to come or whatever. Yeah, totally. And that's kind of like Chinese New Year for Chinese people. Yeah. Like thank Thanksgiving for Americans is like Chinese year for Chinese people. Which it's like fear. It's like, and it's like, yeah, getting triggered. Yes. And, you know, a lot of like, yeah, like, yeah. So co- family conflicts, intrusive questions, uh-huh. right? All God, these I wish come I had around. Book before Chinese New Year. <laughs> Why don't you come up with this book before? <laughs> yes. Next Chinese New Year. Okay, I've been ready for next Chinese New Year. Yes. Or oh, Don't Children. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. Festival. That's mm-hmm. another one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what you talk about the family work and even love relationships so how, how people do when they go on dates then yeah okay yeah. i'm sure you get a lot of question on that right especially oh, nowadays yeah. with the dating and and well now it's a whole different animal from 10 years ago you know i mean it feels like the only way to meet someone now is online yeah especially now it's like it's so hard to distinguish like how women supposed to act and they're on a date because you want to be equal. And then the men is like, should I pay? Do I offer? Like all this stuff. And do women, do we offer to? But again, all this question that's, at least for me, that's all I've come up with. Absolutely. And I think a lot of it is very cultural. So for example, in Asia, a man would never let a woman pay. Even even if they're just platonic friends. Yeah. Right? Like in China, a, a man, like, or in Taiwan. Yeah. Right? I mean, Trust your guy me, friend would pay. That was a shock for me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. And then you come to America and then it all of a sudden it's like, you know, you, you, and you, you actually get offended when you offer. Yeah. Like, if I offer with my Chinese friend, they're like, yes, we, um, is, is me. No, don't even think of it. Yeah. Do you, and they're really thinking, do are you saying that I can't afford it? Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. here you need to offer because if yes. you don't offer, then you, it's like you assumed it is, it's not being polite either. So exactly. So, and I think because in America, there are so many different cultures. Yes that you do have to be more mindful or even within America, like in the South, yes, right? It's Southern also different. men, they, they would open the door for you. They would pay, you know, treat, pick up the bill for a meal and that's their normal. Mm-hmm. But in California, I don't know. Okay. I, I, I know. Who I can't knows? wait. <laughs> Lady, everybody, seriously, get the book. I mean, I like, even now I'm just talking to you, I only have so many questions. And then the family part, now I get it. I can see that totally because- yeah. Thanksgiving dinner, Chinese New Year, it was, it triggered a lot of people how to add at the dinner, right? It's one of the topics, so I can see that. But then I, I, I see that you also came up with a new product, uh, a totally different from my own matter or how to be your best self in any situation. It's actually not just about personal growth. It's actually a, a, a intimate, per, I would say self-care product, right? Yeah, you know, everything I've done is across two realms. The first realm is East meets West. Mm -hmm. And the second one is empowering women to move through the world with confidence. And with Anti Vorta, which means goddess of the future in Roman mythology. By the way, I get to keep this. Woohoo! Enjoy it. Let me know, you know, how your your feedback on the product. Good. And it is intimate wellness that Mm -hmm. is inspired by traditional Chinese medicine. So it's all herbal, it's vegan, it's clean, it's, you know, cruelty free. And it's effective. It works. So we have cleansing gel, we have spray, and we have wipes that are all for the vulva. We don't believe we're not promoting douching. It's mm-hmm. all for the external. Well, oh, okay. He, sorry, I like the What's vagina the on the inside. So people, you know, yeah. we, we often use vagina to refer to the whole area, but actually, yeah, like, there's that's a what lot I thought. of yeah. right. But and and you know, casually we say that, but the vagina is really on the inside, and the vulva is on the outside. So. Um, we, what we're doing is this is because Eastern medicine is about prevention. Western medicine is about treatment. It's Mm -hmm. about that quick fix. Yeah. And in traditional Chinese medicine, we believe that a woman's health begins in her ovaries. And Mm -hmm. so your feminine health is the most important. And even your period is a report card of your health. Are you regular? Have your light flow? Do you have blood clots? Are you entering early menopause? A lot of celebrities are talking about menopause now. Drew Barrymore had a hot flash on on camera um naomi watts has come out and told everybody that she she went into menopause at the age of 37 years old 
See, but the, you know, I'm so glad a lot of celebrity actually start talking about it because even just like in the last few years, nobody's talking about it. Like even me, like right now, I'm like, what's the difference between、um, douche and 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 you were saying vaginas inside, vulvas outside? Like, you know, you would think that we would have this knowledge, but honestly, like no one really talk about it. So yeah, and yeah. and so for us, you know, for me and my co-founder Annie. Whose family business is traditional Chinese medicine? Antivorta is a synthesis of East meets West, right? Where we're bringing traditional Chinese medicine. We want to share it with the world, and also helping women be more confident in their own skin. And so, intimate care—it's really the care that nobody sees, but the confidence that everybody notices. It's so cute. I like the packaged pink. Thank you. This one is my、it. favorite color. So, <laughs>、uh, okay. So, but how you thought about getting into that session of the self care?、Um, Well, because because in traditional Chinese medicine, so me and Annie, we both. She grew up in Taiwan.、Oh, okay. I grew up in Hong Kong. In fact,、uh-huh. her grandpa founded his first TCM clinic in in Kaohsiung. Oh, in, that's in, where I'm from. In the nineteen in the nineteen、yeah. forties. So pretty. And and so and and in fact, his TCM clinic is still there to this day, run by her cousins. So because it's、oh, her wife.、Wow. And、uh, and so for us, we grew up with herbal remedies. I mean, I grew up in Hong Kong.、It's, my parents were always in search of the next best Chinese doctor, and. To this day, every week I do acupuncture. Every two weeks I do cupping, and it's I do I drink the herbal soups. So, I we wanted to share what keeps us healthy and happy with the world, and take something that's been around for thousands of years. Right, TCM has been around for two thousand five hundred years, documented from dynasty to dynasty by emperors,、mm-hmm. and help that with our modern day lives.、Mm. And what? Where can we get the product? Oh, by the way, how you get picked a name? Well, Anti Vorta means goddess of the future in Roman mythology, and and we just feel that you know we I'm a very optimistic person. We feel like every woman is in control of her own destiny. I believe that too.、Mm-hmm. And so we you know we 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 wanted a name like that.、Uh, you can purchase it on AntiVortaLabs dot com. Okay, which is our you know our website, or follow our Instagram handle Anti Vorta Laboratories. Okay, so this L, so people can purchase、yes. those, and the book I have to wait till April then.、Right? April ninth, yeah. But I mean, when is the podcast coming out? Make sure、um, it comes out like yeah, this month, yeah. So then people can pre-order. To, people can start ordering them for sure, because this is especially like, I think for a lot of single people, I think the the love relationship part would be good because it's so confusing nowadays. At least for me, I I find them very confusing. And it's just like, do you offer? Do you not? Like, yeah, especially you go up <laughs> to two different cultures. Depends on who you go on a date with. You go on a date with a white guy, maybe you should offer. Yeah, go on a date like, with an Asian guy, maybe don't offer. Do you know what I mean? And then the family dinner was another one because I, you know, whether you're from east or west, we all have this family dinner fear. The the triggering, you know. I guess you're right for Americans Thanksgiving, for Chinese is the Chinese New Year that we just pass.、Um, Yeah, so like I can't wait to listen to it. Is it going to be also in audio so people、yes. can hear? Yes. So I was just in New York recording the audio version of the book. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Because for some people, especially nowadays, I I listen so many on audio when I'm driving long distance. It's the best way to reach.、Mm. So okay. So with this, yeah. Also, is it just way in the U.S. or anywhere、um, people well, we can ship, order? We sh- we ship to the U.S. and a couple other countries internationally, like. Um, we ship to Singapore,、uh, UK, France,、um, Canada, and、uh, we also ship to Hong Kong SAR. Oh, is this is a is this is an area that you want to focus on? Are you thinking about expanding more on the intimate care or for women care? I think we're just going to stay focused on intimate care for now. Okay.、Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? I think. That's also a niche because you really don't see that many. I mean, there's so many, there's so many beauty products, right? But you don't really see just tailored to that. So I, I don't know why. I don't know why we don't have more. Like yeah, and it's such an important, important part of our bodies. I think, I think once women move beyond sort of skincare in the face. And and you know and move to like okay caring for and hair and right dental yeah you I do see more hair recently also now、yeah. they move to hair well hair loss is a very big issue now because especially for young people they're coloring their hair they're、yeah. you know, doing all sorts of things to their hair which honestly the less you do to your hair the better the、yeah. more you do like the more damage it is so that they get they get hair loss from that and then older people suffering from hair loss and actually pregnant women you know pe- women, pregnant who women who give birth yeah they, they have a lot massive of hair. hair loss yeah. 
So that's what I was saying. This is really interesting because when I when I saw this, I was like, "That's so awesome!" Because I don't know why there's not enough, there's not that many, like Prada that tailor to women's intimate care. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's something that we're very very passionate about. And maybe it has to do with my age because I see more and more topic of my even my mom, my girlfriend talk about menopause, and yeah. this is something that a lot of people don't talk about, especially in Hollywood. So I'm really glad that. So, so more. thank God we have you know female strong female role models in Hollywood yeah. who who are talking about it because it is very important. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sarah Jenks. This is amazing. I definitely wanted to try it, and I'm excited about your book. I can't wait, and then I, I definitely want to read this session. And besides this book, are you planning to write more book? Maybe you can focus on more dating for single lady out there. Yeah, I mean, I feel that if I write a next book, it would be about traditional Chinese medicine. And, mm. and you know, in my Netflix show, I say every girl needs a TCM doctor and a feng shui master. Oh, feng shui master! Yeah, I said, and I said, and I bring out feng shui in my show because it's part of my makeover for yeah. my students. It, and again, it's about living your best life, right?、Mm-hmm. So I think if I ha- write any next books, one would be TCM, one would be feng shui. If I, I feel like you actually live out your dream as a little girl, because based on what you're telling me, how you how you living everywhere, and you always want to go to different places. But even given that, which I see you as living out your dream as a little girl, what advice you would give now, looking back to the little you? Yeah,、uh, I think the biggest piece of advice, in which I myself have learned over time, is that you you can't control anything in the world really, and you can't control anybody. The only thing you control is your reaction.、Mm. But that's so hard. How you do it, that? It is, but you know, it takes time and it takes practice. And for example, you know, when I was younger and something happened, I would think of the end of the world, or right. And but now, and especially, I mean, if you start a business, you were like fighting fires every day, as you know.、Right? Yeah, and, that's why we said that I had to take a deep breath. I was like, oh my god, I right. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you start a business in China, <laughs> that's next、more. level. <laughs> and, <you laughs> that. and 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 my staff always say like, let's say something goes wrong with this or that. My staff are always just shocked at how calm I am. Then I tell them because in the grand scheme of things, in five days, five months, five years, like is this really going to matter? No, we're we're not a hospital. We're not saving lives. If something goes wrong, it's not the end of the world.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so I just control my reaction to.、It. I stay very calm. I'm just very like solutions oriented.、Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So all the girls listen to that, but that takes practice. <laughs> This is not going to be easy, but take practice. It takes everything takes practice, and practice makes perfect.、Mm. Okay. Are you going to plan to do anything more development in China, or are you plan to do something in the U.S.? I feel that the last ten years, my career was very China focused, but the next decade, it's going to be America focused, and that's why I'm spending so much time in America now. Did you think about would you whether do like a Would you do more seminar or etiquette school in the U.S.? Because I'm sure a lot of women would sign up for it, or men should sign up for it. By the way, but I'm just saying, I don't know yet. For now, I'm busy enough, you know, with with my book and with Anti Vorta.、Uh, but we'll see. I definitely want to do more etiquette related things, but nothing. We're still working on it.、Yeah. If you're ever gonna do that, please let us know because I, 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 I would I wouldn't be the first I would be the first one to sign <laughs> up, and、you. I'm sure a lot of my girlfriends will. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for you so、here. much for having me. Thank you.